Some big news on the Amazon front, new ruling from NLRB. Let's go ahead and put this tear sheet up on the screen. The NLRB has accused Amazon of threatening and surveilling warehouse workers on Staten Island. That is a significant facility. That's, of course, where Christian Smalls was working when he was fired, they say, for violating COVID protocols. Okay, what he was Mm. really fired for was agitating for better conditions and potentially a union for his workers. Um, It's also where we've tracked a worker who, again, was agitating for union rights, who was fired, who has now been made homeless because he was fired um, potentially illegally by Amazon. They deny all wrongdoing, et cetera, et cetera. Let me give you a little bit of what this article says. Federal labor labor regulators on Thursday accused Amazon of illegally surveilling and threatening workers who are trying to unionize a Staten Island, New York warehouse. They want to compel Amazon to take certain actions to inform workers of their right to organize. That's according to a regional director for the agency. They say that Amazon repeatedly broke the law by threatening, surveilling, and interrogating their Staten Island warehouse workers who are engaged in a union union organizing campaign. Amazon says this is false and we'll show it through the process. But, you know, some of the behavior that they were accused of here is really quite incredible. According to the complaint, they interrogated employees about their organizing activities, called union organizers thugs, and allegedly threatened employees by telling them it would be futile to select the union as their bargaining representative. They're also accused of soliciting unspecified grievances from employees with the promise to remedy them if they reject the union. So basically saying like, hey, if you've got some problem, I can fix it for you if you reject Mm. the union. This is totally and completely illegal. Yep. Union elections are supposed, workers have a right to join a union if they want to join a union. Union elections are supposed to occur in a laboratory environment, which is exactly what the NLRB ruled Mm -hmm. Amazon had violated in that election down in Bessemer. And all of this becomes really significant because um, the Amazon labor union, this new union that's attempting to organize the workers there on Staten Island, they just uh, collected sufficient signatures to trigger a union election. So this is an ongoing situation. The one thing I'll point out here is how pathetic it is that like the remedy for this blatantly illegal bullying and union busting behavior is that they're going to have to like post notices around mm-hmm. the warehouse about what workers' rights actually are. We always try to point that out. Yeah, you know, you can find them, but they always get away with it. This is part of the problem. And you know, you look at this stuff, it is just so blatant. Also, how good is it that this news comes from the Washington Post? Which yeah, is owned that's a great by point. By Jeff Bezos. That is and a great point. Let me tell you something. They immediately in the fourth graph put Amazon spokesperson said the allegations were false. Disclosure, Amazon founder Jeff Bezos owns the Washington Post. These are little things you would never think of. It's very, very rare in order to have the direct response from the company all the way up above the fold, so to speak, in order to make it so that it's in the very fourth paragraph. I know this because I used to write and was a journalist. And if you read, you can see that the responses are usually buried in the 20th or the 30th or whatever paragraph, and they describe the allegation fully before, but instead they put the response and then they go into the details that Crystal all just laid out. So another little piece of media manipulation for all of you folks out there. But look, this is the second time now they've been caught threatening and surveilling warehouse workers on Staten Island. They have to redo the election because they basically rigged it over at Bessemer, yeah. even though they probably would have won anyway. So, you know, it, there's... God, the, the stuff these people get away with, it's unbelievable. Yeah, and and listen, I mean, I think it's still very long odds in Bessemer that the yeah. result will be any different. But the climate is a little bit different now from when they were That's originally running that election. So I do think they have a little bit of a, a better shot this time around. But it just shows you how, you know, the technical right to join a union is, you know, it's, it's very difficult because— mm-hmm. Workers are uh, rational to look at this set of circumstances and say, you know what, they're threatening to fire me or they're threatening to close the plant um, if I vote in favor of the union, if we ultimately end up with a union. And you know what, they've done that sort of stuff before and they got away with it. So that's why these circumstances are so incredibly difficult. And of course, that's why you need a total sea change in the way that we approach yeah. unionization and, and the way that these elections ultimately occur. But, you know, once again, they're caught red-handed, um, effectively bullying, surveilling, and engaging in these blatantly illegal 
tactics, even under our sort of toothless current union laws. And, um, you know, I think the more that people see the way that Amazon behaves here, the more workers are feeling emboldened, the, the better chance we have of at least gaining a little bit of ground within the labor movement. And ultimately, we care about this so much because if you don't have an organized working class, like, honestly, you don't really have a democracy. No, you, don't, you just yeah. have a corporatocracy. You have exactly what we have now, where it's rich people and corporate interests who run everything because there is zero counterbalancing force. I've been pointing it out here, but look, you know, unionization actually went down in the year 2021, which shows you a lot when we have a big worker revolution happening, which we all support. But we got to make sure we keep these lasting changes. It can't be temporary. You got to have people out there fighting. Should we reform union? I don't know. You know, I, I don't have the answer to a lot of this. I just want people to have better lives and to fight for them. And this is, you know, this is just exactly what all these folks are up against because they rule your life if you work at these companies and it shouldn't be that way. That's right. All right. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll have more for you later. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.